And welcome back to the big board. Holy dooly. Well, you know, here we go. Looking at Tunisia, Tunisia, however you want to pronounce it. It's a dreary Sunday afternoon in the early stages of the summer here in Austin. And uh, it's kind of wet and it's kind of sticky and it's kind of icky. And I think that's inf in infecting my uh, desire to play this game. Which is really surprising given how much I thoroughly enjoy the entire OCS experience. But there's something about this particular title. Uh, uh, maybe it's the map. Maybe it's the map artwork. Maybe it's the situation. I don't know. But let's. Uh, I, I'm I'm really quite frustrated with the uh, with the gameplay. And I've only played a couple of turns. I was well a couple of turns into it, and I'm looking at this and imagining forward. Uh, you know, projecting some thoughts forward and some assessments on the situation, and I don't see a lot changing for me. And I'm feeling like this is a very static game, except for one section of the map. And I'll, I'll show you that in a section, in a second, in a section, in a second. So, what do we got here? Uh, you guys probably all know it's March '43, and uh, in fact, we're on the uh, what are we on? 22nd of Feb turn uh, of March turn, and. <clears throat> Allies, dark brown, tan, and green units are the Axis forces. And lots of narrow uh, roads and passways and passes and things through various canyons, I would call them, valleys, escarpments, etc. And it kind of channels the movement. Now, there it is possible to move infantry forces through these mountainous areas. But if you do try and attack anybody, you suffer very stiff penalties for doing so. So in the north, unless there are significant reinforcements, which I don't believe there are, I've double-checked this, there's a few pieces that come on, but not a whole lot. Uh, <clears throat> not a lot is really going to happen up here unless someone gets lucky. And I'll show you why. Uh, you've got uh, the, the Axis forces. Now here I've got two of the best tank battalions kind of stacked together there. Uh, they were reacting to an action um, that was occurring here. These guys are trying to build up some force, but if you look, two, five, eight, a little pack of heads there. Uh, there's a commander unit behind it. I think they're commandos, whatever they are, uh, with a five rating. So we could get in there and have a go at that, uh, perhaps with some other units that we moved into here adjacent. Or if we could get around, we can encircle the unit and, and force uh, an out-of-supply situation and then have a more beneficial attack. But uh, the ability to, to do that and get decent odds, and when I talk decent odds in this game, you really need to be starting at 4-1 to one before you start rolling for surprise. Uh, otherwise, life is going to get difficult for you real quickly. And I'll explain why. Because uh, in, in, in this instance, I think... Uh, Okay, so that's rough terrain. And that's even rougher terrain. <laughs> uh, that's going to put you in close, which means on the 4 to 1 table, you're effectively looking at taking a loss if you roll anything less than a 7. And even then, you're going to have to take the optional loss. Uh, yeah, A01, D01 on an 8. Yeah, so you're you're really in a world of hurt uh, on on many of those attacks uh, at the lower lower odds levels. So it means you're going to have to combine forces. Now the, the 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 dirty secret of this Commonwealth force here is that they're not very powerful. All the American units are rated at a two <coughs> efficiency. Uh, many of the uh, these Allied forces are rated at twos. So they're not really going to be attacking. We've got two commandos down here. So what we could do is potentially rearrange some of these guys. I've got these guys in reserve mode here. Uh, and they're quite powerful. That's an armored, little armored stack, but it's really in case the Germans try to break out or do something. So I've got to kind of have them in uh, one reserve stack. And I've got this artillery probably. Yeah, artillery in reserve uh, for defense. And I've got the same there and there, right? Uh, so you don't have uh, the weight of units to to force a passageway through one of these 
areas. It's easy to kind of pile it up with a bunch of little crappy uh, two three threes and look, there's another good unit there, six two threes. The Germans are on the in the main have much better units, and some of them actually have better combat values. So. What am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say here that nothing's going to happen here. I don't believe. Not for a long time. So let's ignore that part of the map for a, section, a, 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 a period of time. And let's assume that that's going to stay static. And that would then do uh, would potentially do one thing. That might allow the Germans to free up some of these better quality units here. For instance, these guys. Uh, and... And you see, see what's happened here is, you know, as I saw this weight of forces coming here, I've, I've pressed up some good quality units and let them sit there until these units move away. And then when they move away, I'll move them somewhere else. But if we were to thin this out a little bit and push some units south, maybe something could happen down this part of the map. So let's move down this part of the map. Down here, things are very thin and very spread out. There's uh, one, two uh, roads through the mountains, a third one here. So that's really one section. So one, two sections through the mountains. There's, uh, you know, this, these are six two threes. These are, you know, nigh on some of the credit units going to come across, but they do have good combat factors if you were, for instance, to combine them with one of these guys. Um, this is, in fact, a little area that could uh, potentially be an opportunity for the uh, allies to attack. And they can start attacking up this road, uh, bring these uh, reinforcements down here, and potentially have some fun. Right, so that's one area that we will probably have a look at at some point in the near future. <coughs> Down here, similar situation. Uh, both sides were trying to jockey for position here, and really, um, neither of them have the force to kind of press the passes. Um, the advent of some of these French Moroccan units is kind of cool. It gives a little bit of weight to the attack here. The Italians have, have uh, decided to kind of lay off a little bit and back up here. Uh, they don't really have the ability to stop an attack coming through here. So this has some uh, some value to the Allies in terms of an attack. So that would be two areas where they could potentially do something. So we could put uh, a little marker here, right? Uh, here, uh, you know, uh, that that's just that's a tough attack to make in the mountains there because we would be able to pick the best terrain. Uh, there's no way that attack's going to go off with any certainty of success. Uh, they would need a at least a 4 or a 5 uh, efficiency rated units there and all of these factors here to really have a shot at doing something. And I would probably reinforce that with some uh, uh, some artillery in reserve or another, another unit. Uh, and that's where I'd probably start looking at drawing down some of the units from the north, from up there and bring one unit down here so not a lot going on there but the potential to kind of press the pass here and even if we do press the pass here uh, I think we're okay as a as an armed force uh, retreating back this way uh, except for the fact that it leaves uh, the 10th Panzer formation and the 21st Panzer formation in a bit of a bind with uh, being able to trace supply back to you know one of these ports uh, locations. So, and, and a successful attack here would be a good thing for for the Allies. Okay, my my opening moves here and my opening setup actually. There's a key hex here that when I was putting things together, I just uh, I didn't pop a unit here. And it caused all sorts of problems with the opening move because of uh, just movement rates and where it allowed the allies to place their units in defense. So it, it took us, a, a, uh, there, there wasn't that opening dash uh, that, that probably would have been more effective at removing the units here. Nevertheless, the Americans did retreat. Every single unit in this pile here for the, for the Americans is a two rate efficiency rating of two. They're extremely weak, but they have good high combat values. It's just a matter of finding <coughs> someone they can kind of lead with. Uh, get my tweezers out. Use them right-handed. I'm a little bit awkward with the right hand. Uh, yeah, these are all twos here. And I think this pile there, twos as well. So, 
so you think, okay, well, gee, you know, the Germans could pile in there and attack. Well, you can't really because the, the numbers are so high that you're only, you're only getting a two-to-one or a, sometimes even a one-to-one -one attack when you attack one of these guys. Even if they're DG, let's say I attack this stack. This is probably not a good example. Well, it is a good example, 13. So that would be uh, six and a half on defense. I can only muster... Uh, are they in the open there? And this guy's actually in the open, so that might be an okay attack. But I can muster. There's uh, 15 there. And let's say we manage to get these two guys up here as well. This is That becomes a fairly big attack. 15 and 11 is 26 to 13. That would be a 2 to 1 attack. That's a crappy attack, even with a plus 3 on the die roll. And let's assume that I got lucky and got the, uh, got the su a surprise shift. Let's say I got six surprise shifts in the open. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that'll put it up to an 11 to 1. That'd be awesome, but it's more likely going to be a 5 to 1 uh, attack. And a 5 to 1 attack is kind of... I don't know if I want to risk a, a fine uh, battalion of mechanized infantry or, uh, or armor for the end result, which would be one step lost in a retreat and advancing into there. And I would have to spend a full SP to do that. Uh, in fact, two SP because I've got to move the guys to do it, and I've got to do that several times. And these guys will just rejig, and uh, really all I've got to do is is a retreat back to say this hex here, and this hex here, and put a big big stack of units there and some RDM reserve, and then we ain't going anywhere. Yeah, we could try and push this way. That would be interesting, and then try and come up on the rear of these guys here. So who knows. Uh, further, so I, I'm not that excited about the opportunities for the Germans there. Uh, I think there was an opportunity in the first turn that if I had it done it correctly, we could have perhaps uh, made some more startling inroads or something like that. Uh, I think it's a, one of those things where you've got to really plan the first turn out pretty well. Over here, similar sort of, oops, nearly knocked the camera over. Similar situation, uh, not enough units and too many crappy ones on the Allied side for there to be anything of note really to be going on. Uh, not nothing is going to happen over here. That's my guess. Like I said, I could, I can make a pile. I can make three little piles across here. Sorry, guys. Here, block that. We've got this blocked up. We've got this blocked up. It's kind of dark in here. I don't know if it's gotten darker just now. The clouds must be closing in. There we go. A little bit better. Now, let's look at the interesting thing. The interesting thing that did happen was down in the south on the very first... Uh, I've got units stuck to my arm. Crap. Thank goodness there are only uh, DG counters. Um, what was I going to say? Yes, so beginning of turn two, we rolled for, uh, for what's his face, Montgomery, to arrive with his army. And lo and behold, there they came rushing into the fray so we must be into the third turn not the second turn so uh and you know very uh astute and cautious play by the kiwis and the the australians and the english and we've managed to knock a few units out here and there to capture one of these hedgehog uh, locations so we've cracked the line here and now we're just going to slowly, you know, eat this guy, then eat this guy, and then, then kind of push our forces in. Now, the cool thing about this section of the map is that you have a very limited amount of supply that can come in. So you've really got to start flying some, uh, some uh, T's down here to some tokens down here to help these guys uh, have enough supply to really have a fairly robust attack. I don't even have all the forces on the board yet uh, because there wasn't enough to activate everybody and get them all uh, get them all on the board in in the first turn. At least I don't think there was uh, the way I did. However, I did it. However, I elected to do it. That's what happened because I made several attacks uh, along the way here uh, in the first turn to attempt to knock out some resistance. And unfortunately, that was not successful. There's a little village here somewhere. There it is, right there. Yeah, you sucker. All right, so. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, this is this. So this will, here's what's going to happen here. Is, oh, come on. Is these guys are going to stop. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I can't help myself. I just got to straighten it up. Stop. Ah! 
oh, OCD, blah. Uh, uh, these guys are going to peck away at this. They're going to break that line. They're going to come back to, there's a second hedgehog line here, and they're going to do the same thing again. Or they're going to come around this way and uh, cut these guys off, put them out of supply, game over. Uh, once this force gets through, there are quite a few uh, three rated and four rated efficiency level units that w they will be able to go toe to toe with the 21st and the 10th Panzer division up here. And so the 10th Panzer is going to, and 21st is going to have to make a decision: do they fly down here and and uh, do a little bit of reinforcing, or do they try and hold the line here? Uh, it's uh, it's basically in the north. It's the allies that are in a sort of pseudo defensive mode, uh, basically all the way down to, you know, this line here somewhere, you know, round about here. And then down here, the allies are on the attack. So I can see how it would be a really great game uh, to be playing opposed. I'm struggling to be interested and engaged with it uh, solo. And I'm not sure why that is, but uh, it's a, it, I'm finding it frustrating. I keep sitting down to play. And and I'm, it's just not, I'm just it's just not getting me, man. I'm I'm, I'm having a real hard time with it. So I, I'm not sure that I'm going to play much more beyond the end of this turn. I will. Uh, in fact, it's the Allies' turn, so we're going to conduct the attacks here. We'll uh, run these couple of attacks here, and depending on what happens with the uh, with these these two attacks, if something dynamic happens, then I may. Uh, I may keep going, but we'll see. Uh, and I'm also going to uh, just flick through the rules, the, the, the module-specific rules, and have a look at them to make sure that I'm not missing something uh, critical in the, the restrictions and controls and the rules for the game. I understand that this is a big class favorite for all the OCS fans, and I love the OCS system. I'm just saying... Uh, First of all, it's one of the most butt ugly maps I've ever come across. Uh, so the the attraction to sit down and look at uh, all of these brown hexes with all of these brown counters is not very appealing. Number one, so it's not an engage visually engaging exercise. Even the text on the on the map is brown. Uh, and I understand we're trying to evoke some sort of desert feel, but you compare this to the DAC maps, and man, it's chalk and cheese. So, uh, and and the game and the game, the specific situation that's going on here is just not that interesting. There's a bunch of really shitty units uh, on both sides, uh, and, and a sma and what what we lack in uh, quality, we're making up in quantity for the Americans. And the Germans just have a bunch of uh, half assed weak Italian units. Um, I bet you could probably do something very cool if you were an OCS master, and I am probably just missing it completely. But uh, I am uh, thoroughly, uh, well, not thoroughly, because I haven't given up on it yet. But I'm just not that enthused about it at the moment, and that could be the weather. <laughs> it may just be the weather. All right, later.